and we're recording. Hello everyone and welcome to the Centre for Creative Health in Conversation series. This series highlights members of the community who assist CCH in presenting our arts and health programs and allows us to focus on some of the amazing work these professionals do. My name is Fiona Borthwick and we're speaking today with Jess Bennett. Hi Jess. Hello. Jess is an arts therapist working across the Queen Elizabeth and Royal Adelaide Hospitals as part of the Centre for Creative Health team. So maybe let's start with what is an arts therapist? Um, can you tell us a bit about your role and what it involves? Yeah, sure. So uh, art therapy is a form of psychotherapy. So we work with um, our clients with art materials. So art materials is a way for people to express themselves, to externalise um, what's going on for them. Um, but rather than just talk therapy, they get to do that through the use of different art materials. Um, so it's really a great approach for anyone really, but especially um, I would say children, people that are non-verbal or that people that struggle to communicate verbally um, but but also anybody anybody can come and, and do an art therapy session um, so that's what art therapy is um, in regards to my role so I work um, in the inpatient setting at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and Royal Adelaide Hospital so I work mostly in general medicine so it's quite varied as general medicine is so yeah so working with all sorts of people um so i work with people around maybe anxiety depression pain management chronic illness discharge planning um and also all the complications that go along with um living with an illness as well so um it's never a dull moment, that is for sure. <laughs> it sounds like a huge job, very complex. <laughs> yeah, um, it can be very complex, um, but it's also really rewarding as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, especially bringing arts into the um, clinical setting. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah is... Um, yeah, really rewarding. So did you always want to be an arts therapist? Um, how did you get started? So, um, no is the short answer <laughs> because I didn't know it existed <laughs> for yeah. quite a while. Yeah, so um, I guess for me, I, I used art music from a really young age um, to kind of process you know, just the experience of growing up and all the things that, that we um, experience in those times. Um, and, and I think a lot of artists and musicians do that naturally and, and use that, yeah, to um, externalise our experience. But um, so there was that. So I already knew the kind of healing powers of art. Um, but then I... I kind of left high school, I studied design, and then I went into a visual arts degree, but I didn't have an end point, like I couldn't see where I was going to go from there. Um, so I only did a year of that and I left because I just was a bit confused. And then I remember the exact moment I kind of discovered art therapy in a roundabout way. <laughs> And I was listening to a radio segment and there was a woman speaking who um, was living with schizophrenia and she was talking about how she used art, painting in particular, to um, kind of externalise the voices she was hearing constantly and to give a face to the, the demons, is what she called it. So give a face to the demons through painting and that was a way for her to get it out of her head and into the real world, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and also to, I guess, show other people what her experience was like. And I thought, oh my goodness, that's how do I find a way to, I guess, introduce that to people um, and people who, 
have the fortune to, to, to know what art can do, you know, the, the powers of art, healing powers of art. So I did some research and I found the Masters of Art Therapy course at um, Western Sydney University. So I'm from New South Wales originally. Yeah. So that gave me the motivation to go back to uni, finish my undergrad in creative arts, um, also do the lifeline crisis counselling course because to be accepted into the masters you need some counselling experience as well so um, that was an experience in itself so I ended up working volunteering on the um, crisis lines for lifeline and then I was accepted into the master of art therapy so um, and that was an incredible journey. <laughs> that was an amazing journey really I mean it's funny a lot of Creative professionals have so many different pathways to get to where they are. There's not just one direct route, which is, it's really interesting and it can bring a whole lot of different um, interests and, and, and um, skills to, to one point and it, just, it can be so beneficial in the end. It seems like an epic journey to get there, but. <laughs> yeah, but I guess that's what's so special about the creative arts is it can it's so personal yeah for everybody um that journey is and so we do make our own we carve our own paths to it's not even a destination is it it's, yeah. it's a journey we're all on a journey to somewhere yeah. So, um yeah it is it's different for everyone yeah. it's a good way of looking at it as a journey <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know where i'm heading i just know i'm <laughs> <laughs> we're all heading somewhere <laughs> yeah. um, but I uh, for those people who have never been to an art therapy session um, mm -hmm. I imagine it, it's different for every person but what is involved is there a typical process you follow or does it really vary from person to person yeah so I guess if anyone's been to a counseling session or um, seen a um, psychologist it similar in a way but um i guess going and seeing a um, arts therapist who's working in private practice is different to seeing say me if you're an inpatient in hospital so they it varies a little bit but um i guess for me in hospital um working in the hospitals uh if you're a patient that's been referred to our service, you'd be referred by the treating team, just like you'd be referred to any other allied health professional, like occupational therapy or social work. Um, and so I would come and see you and we'd have a chat um, about what's going on for you. Um, and I would explain to you what art therapy is and how it works. Um, and then if you uh, give your consent, if you agree it's something that, it might work for you then um, in the first session you would depending on your mobility so if you're in bed and you, you can't you know you're in pain you can't move I'd come and do a bedside session with you otherwise I would probably encourage you to come and come into my art space so first session um, really gentle totally non-judgmental and I guess the really important thing to know is that um, you don't have to be good at art. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to have any experience at all in art making. Mm -hmm. And I think that may put people off. I think people yeah. feel like they need to know what they're doing, uh, which is absolutely not true. So um, that's, yeah. So you come in, I'll kind of show you what the different materials are, how to use them. Um, and also material, some materials are, are good for certain things. For example, um, I use clay a lot when people are anxious. It's a really yeah. grounding material. Really um, yeah, tactile and it is literally from the earth. So, I mean, in that way it's grounding. Um, just being able to, yeah, feel and squeeze and all those things um, really allows people to get tension out. So. I'll explain those kind of things to people, you know, what, how are you feeling? This, maybe this material might, might be good for you today. And then um, people work differently. So maybe someone will want, you know, a chunk of time to just work on their art without, you know, and I'll just sit back and I'm just there kind of holding that space for them. And then when they're finished, um, 
we have a chat about what it was like, what was the process like, what came up for you. Um, you know, we talk a lot about metaphor in art therapy. Um, but at the same time, the lovely thing about art therapy is if you don't want to talk, you don't have to. So that's, that's always your choice. That's well. huge. That can be really um, beneficial to some people, I can imagine, the not having to vocalise what they're, yeah. That's right. I mean, it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is beneficial to, to process that with the therapist and, you know, to externalise it and have a chat, but you don't have to, you know, that, that's okay. And it might take multiple sessions before you feel like you want to talk about what's happened in the session. Yeah. Really. So that answers the question. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's a, it's a big question and it's, um, yeah, and it's, it's one of those processes that's really, really, you know, complex and involved and, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And every um, art therapist works a little differently and every studio space is different. And, yeah. 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 Yeah, definitely. Um, but I imagine, we've covered this a little bit already, but I imagine working predominantly in an acute hospital setting can be quite different than a long-term care setting or, or something like that. Um, how is art therapy used in this instance and what are the challenges and the patient benefits? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I guess the challenges of an acute inpatient setting is that... Um, I never really know how long I have to work with somebody. Yeah. So every, every session, really, it could be our first or our last session. Yeah. Um, it's hard to know. People are transferred, you know, all sorts of things happen in a, in a hospital. So I guess it's just um, really letting people know that, that what happens here in this session is really important and, you know, we may have another session, but we may not, and that's okay. Um, Challenges, I guess, are lack of space. Uh, we're trying to, <laughs> trying to work bedside, yeah. um, especially if you're in a shared room. Uh, if someone has a lot of equipment or, or whatever, trying to find a little space to, to do some art making and art therapy. Um, try, you know, privacy in a hospital is almost non-existent, really. It's really difficult. Um, so... We find ways around it, definitely, and it's just always keeping the patient um, informed about what's going on and and and, and uh, what a session might look like and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I guess also, especially now more than ever, um, infection control. So, um, you know, some materials like clay, for example, it's just single use. We don't use that again, but... Um, Art materials are expensive and we like to use good quality art materials. We want people to know what it feels like to work with a high pigment paint, you know, um, work with materials that artists work with. So a lot of those materials we can't just throw away. <laughs> so it's just making sure that um, everything's clean, disinfectant, all that kind of stuff all the time and keeping on top of that as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure there's more challenges, but the benefits outweigh the challenges. And um, and we just, you know, you've just got to be creative about the way you go about things. And yeah. Yeah, I guess, guess you get to practice a lot of creative pro problem solving and um, lots of different, yeah, out of the box thinking to get things working. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's interesting, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so this year, um, I guess we've had a rather intense start with the bushfires and now COVID-19. Um, do you think the role of arts and health has changed in light of the events or has it just become more relevant and more important? I think it's definitely as important as ever. I think um, on a really obvious level, it's changed in that um, a lot of us are not on site at the moment. Yeah. Um, and so, but what I found is that being creative thinkers, um, I've just been amazed at how quickly 
um, arts and health workers have just risen to the challenge of adapting, um, you know, getting stuff up online, um, you know, reaching patients in different ways, collaborating. Um, yeah, and I, and I think being able to think creatively in this time is a, is a huge asset. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, art and music is such a universal, um, like, tool of communication. And so I think, especially when words don't really, you know, um, sum up what we're feeling, I think people are feeling all sorts of feelings they may have never felt before, that um, uncertainty and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes that is just more easily expressed through art and music yeah. or even listening to music and saying, oh, that's, that's how I'm feeling. Like that, you know, whether it's lyrics or just the emotive kind of sense of a piece, I think people are connecting to that more than ever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think so too. Um, yeah, it's uh, people, I mean, I know that words tend to fail me a lot and sometimes <laughs> I need a bit of artistic expression to, to get that um, anxiety or whatever out. Um, so it's definitely, yeah, yeah, raise that need as well. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Very valuable, I think. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, so how have the restrictions around COVID-19 affected you personally, professionally? Um, I'm guessing both, but um, specifically, mm. how have they affected you? Um, it's actually interesting because I think on a personal level, I feel like we're all experiencing a very similar, like, universal grief almost, or, uni you know, this kind of feeling of uncertainty and not really sure what's happening and I guess I've been able to tap into that a little bit my own experience to understand how other people might be experiencing it as well so um personally you know there's ups and downs so um not being able to be on site means that I've got more time to for self-care for exercise you know, cooking, spending time with my husband and my dog, all that lovely stuff. But at the same time, feeling that really, that unease about what's next. No one knows yeah. where this is going to go, you know. Um, and so then professionally, not being on site has been difficult because more than ever, you want to be there for, for the patients and the staff. But um, so it's finding ways to still connect with them. Um, and we've done that through art packs and, um, you know, just communicating with OT and occupational therapy, mental health. And, um, and currently we're making up um, some self-care packs for staff, for frontline staff. Um, and I guess my part in that has been um, collaborating with our other arts therapists and diversional therapists and um, creating a booklet of activities, um, art-based kind of activities that staff can do. Um, and that's been interesting because, I've, like I said, I've been able to think, well, what's, what's been useful for me right now? Yeah. Um, and how can I then translate that into uh, an activity that is approachable for people? Um, yeah, so... Lots of, lots of introspection, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Self-care and the, the wellbeing packs for staff is such a great initiative um, for the frontline health staff and, and um, everyone working in the hospitals because it's such a stressful time for everyone, but um, dealing with it on the front line, I can't imagine how it feels for them. And, and yeah, the self-care and everything um, is super important at the moment super important and I think um that sense of hyper vigilance yeah you know, always being aware um for staff and I think that can really start to kind of fray your your nerves you know and and really impact um your mental health your physical health as well so 
you know, just trying to offer something for them, not only to say, hey, we think you're amazing, thank you so much for everything you're doing, but also um, you probably don't have a lot of time to even think about self-care or how you're going to practice self-care. So here's this pack for you and um, hopefully we've made it easy and accessible for you to just kind of maybe spend 20 minutes um, doing something to just you know get just a little reminder to yeah 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 whether it's just um kind of uh trying to relax at the end of a day or whether it's trying to just externalize some of your experience as yeah. well and process it a little bit. yeah no definitely um so we have been hearing a lot recently about how creativity can benefit our health and well-being um how have you been creating um, keeping creative in isolation yeah, so um, I have been playing the guitar a lot. So um, one way that I practice self-care, I guess, if I need to step away from art making, which you do sometimes, um, I do a bit of um, songwriting instead. And it's just another avenue to, yeah. to kind, of, um, kind of process, you know, what's going on. Um, also, making up these booklets for patients and staff um, I've been creating these activities myself um, just to make sure that they're uh, easy to follow and they actually are beneficial. So I found myself working with watercolour paint quite a lot, um, which has been great. It's been really lovely, actually. It's such a beautiful medium to work with and such uh, you really lose yourself in it. So just some of that time out, you know. Um, and also um, nature art, which is, I think, super beneficial. So just wandering around my backyard, uh, picking up things that, you know, um, take my attention, creating little mandalas or whatever it is. Um, that as well just so helps to just take your mind off mm. the thoughts that are just kind of constantly going around and around and around, which I think everyone's experiencing at the moment. So, yeah, they've been really nice, actually. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, no, it's important to, to get out there and do things for yourself and not just, yeah, it's, it's really important to have that mindfulness as well. Absolutely. I think if we're trying to care for others, we, we need to care for ourselves um, to make sure we have the capacity. Yeah to offer you know our services yeah yeah. Um, yeah so just to finish up can you speak briefly about the work of another artist or community group that you know of that's doing positive work at the moment is there anyone out there that that deserves a bit of a, a pat on the back at the moment <laughs> I've, I've been thinking about this and i'd love to say you know that there's an incredible artist or but I can't go past um our own music therapist Patsy Turn. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we've we haven't been as arts therapists and um, curators and all those roles, we haven't been able to be on site because of the nature of our work. But um Patsy as a music therapist is able to be on the unit still and I just you know the um i think just she's bringing so much to patients and staff yeah. um, around anxiety and i think just her presence in general has just been just such a um God, like a calming presence i think is what i'm getting from it and i just i just think it's amazing she's there every day on the unit um and she's so experienced as well. She's so calm. She's just <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Patsy for sure. I've just, I think she's amazing. Um, and then just, <laughs> yeah, she's incredible. Um, but I think just in general, um, musicians and artists have just stepped up all over the world so quick to offer their, um, their art and their talent um, to people free, you know, just putting stuff up online, um, online concerts, whatever it is. But that's 
that's the role of an artist and we see that over and over and over again whether it's the bushfire appeal or, or whatever it is anytime there's there's something happening in the world um, that's really hard and confronting for humans you'll find musicians and artists just stepping up yeah where would we be without our artists they're fantastic and innately generous and they just give and for the benefit of others and it's, it's wonderful to see like, yeah absolutely it is wonderful to see and i honestly don't think anyone ever goes into creative field uh for money it's just you know, it's just not, it's just not why we do these things. So with for another reason, and, and that is um, to touch people and touch their lives in some way and communicate and, you know, um, so, yeah. No, absolutely. Well, thank you, Jess, and everyone else for joining us today. Um, if you have any questions or looking for further information on Centre for Creative Health programs or our In Conversation series, check out our website and social media platforms. But for today, that's all from us. Thanks, thanks, Jess, and goodbye. <laughs> See you soon.